I'm Alan Kenny, Editorial Director for REIT.com, and we're in New York for REIT Week 2014, near REIT's Investor Forum at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Joining me is Philip Owens, Vice President with Green Street Advisors Advisory and Consulting Team. So Philip, one question I wanted to ask, there's a trend right now, you've got companies where real estate might not be their primary business, but they're trying to unlock some of that value. Can you give us uh, an idea, some of your observations there? Sure, I think that you know what you're seeing here is a in the marketplace today a real overlap between seller and buyer motivations. From a seller's perspective, we're seeing uh, you know operating companies that have seen their real estate assets appreciate meaningfully in recent years, trying to monetize that value and deploy it back into their core operating business to achieve greater returns. And, and there's nothing new about that versus traditional sale leasebacks we've seen in the past. But what we're seeing from the buyer side is a real strong interest in buying these types of assets from these companies, and so. There's about four times the amount of capital in this space today as there are deals to go around. That's the, the magnitude of interest these investors have. And they're interested because they're looking for current yield, they're looking for some longer term growth, and lack of volatility. And these types of deals tend to provide that. The trend that we're really noticing that's of interest is this trend toward activist investors trying to find ways to unlock real estate value from operating companies, typically publicly traded operating companies, and doing so in a public fashion. So some examples of this would be uh, Elliott Management Company approaching Iron Mountain to do a reconversion, Corvex Capital and Mercado Capital approaching uh, Corrections Corporation of America to do a reconversion, which was completed last year, and then more recently, Starboard Value, another activist investor, approaching Darden re Restaurants to find a way to unlock you know, real estate value from their sizable real estate portfolio. So the interesting trend is, again, on this activist investor front, uh, activities picking up there, and we're trying to pay attention to it. Now, you mentioned uh, Starboard and their deal with Darden uh, for Red Lobster. Now, there's been uh, talk again of spinning out Red Lobster's uh, real estate portfolio, selling that off to American Realty Capital. Uh, what does this you know, say about the larger trend, perhaps, in the market? Sure. So in the advisory and consulting team at Green Street, we work on transactions like this quite a bit. We work with activist investors as they vet ideas and think about execution strategies for transactions like this. So it's, it's something we've paid a lot of attention to. Red Lobster is unique. And of course, what's going to happen here, at least what we think is going to happen, is that Red Lobster will be spun out of Darden to a private equity company who will then subsequently spin that real estate out, uh, the real estate portfolio separately out to American Realty Capital for $1.5 billion. The transaction's really unique because of its size, for one. It's a billion and a half dollar portfolio and single tenant. It just doesn't happen very often. We, we saw this with Shopco and Spirit Realty back in 2006, but even that deal was half the size of this one. Uh, the fact that it's single tenant by nature and it's not diversified is also unique. I think what it means for the marketplace is that everyone's expectations should be reset. That activist investors will see that this type of deal can be done. We're likely to see more activity in the space. And while we don't think there will be a tsunami of these deals coming down the pipeline, the likelihood of seeing more of them is, is probably uh, higher than it was six months ago. So then, what are the kind of characteristics that might increase the likelihood of getting a deal like that done? I think the first is credit quality. And there are going to be several boxes here that you can check. We don't have to check all the boxes to get deals done, but I think number one is credit quality. We talk to market participants all the time, uh, investors who are making plays in the space, and one of the themes is high credit matters. This is a very important point, and we hear this in various ways, but to summarize it, great credit can trump poor real estate, but great real estate cannot trump poor credit. So the idea of having great credit in these portfolios is of paramount importance to these investors. That's number one. Number two would be the fungibility of real estate, the ability to reuse the assets. These companies are often thinking about what they're going to do if a tenant were to vacate a property. The more fungible the real estate, the better. And I think third is diversification. Diversification is important to these investors because they're looking for low volatility cash flow streams and they view diversification as helping them get there. Disaggregate the assets and sell them off to individual investors over time. Right now, wholesale and retail pricing is pretty narrow, but if that gap widens out, we can see more of those players enter the market. That said, with you know, four times the amount of capital in the space as there are deals to go around, we, may not, uh, we might not need those investors back in to, to continue to see uh, volume increase. Well, thanks so much for your time, Philip. Oh, thank you. And for more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com. Mm -hmm.